Foundling homes in Florence alone in Italy, two foundling homes alone got 45,000 children delivered to them in one year. Okay, and they were shipping these children out everywhere, and they just took these children out to all these countries, and they taught them whatever history they wanted to teach them. And there's even another guy called Dane Calloway who's been looking into the slave trade in Africa, and he's realised that most of the black people in Africa are actually Native Americans. They weren't brought there from Africa. The whole thing has been concocted. They just put children everywhere and taught them this false history to put everybody against each other, play everybody off against each other with all of this false history. So, and so, 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 so. Reverse, if, you, if you look at it, if you look at the records, you'll find that the, the, the black people were already in Africa and the slaves were the white children that were brought there from Europe. It's all backwards. Everything's backwards that they've told us. That and you can would go be, find yeah. evidence of this uh, in Virginia where the first slaves arrived. It's, uh, it's quite amazing when you really start looking into this. I'm going to start. I mean, I, I, I haven't seen any of that evidence that white children were brought to Africa to be slaves for Native Africans. I'm not saying I, I, it isn't. No, that, that, like that. They weren't brought to Africa to be slaves for Native Africans, but the, the Americans, the, the original Americans, there was a, it was a mixed race already. There was the Tartarian culture was already in America, and there were black people, there were Native Americans, there were white people, they were everywhere. But most of this culture was wiped out, and then they repopulated the world with children, and they taught them whatever history they wanted. But there, was, there were already black people in Africa, and then the, the, the slaves that were brought over were the boatloads of children that were brought there with the settlers to go and repopulate. That's why they were sending 200,000 children uh, per annum across the United States to repopulate San Francisco and stuff, using them as the child labour. You know, Oliver Twist, you know, the chimney sweeps, all the kids yeah, that were yeah, working yeah. back in the old days. Why was that? You know? There are clues. There, there are a lot of clues in that literature. It's interesting you mentioned Dickens. Um, it, it not, not just in the works of Dickens, but other authors of that period as well. Clues as to what life was really like for children. Where, before we talk more about Tartaria or Tartaria, because this is fascinating stuff, Max. Never know where it's going to go when I speak with you. It's absolutely amazing. What about the slave um, industry then? What about the tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of Africans who were taken in chains to the United States? How would that fit into any of that? Well, were they really? Was there really hundreds of thousands of Africans taken in chains to the United States? Did that really happen, or did they were they already there? Were they already there in the United States? Was that just cooked up? You know, if you go to um, I think it's Virginia, and you look at the the signs, it says when the first slaves arrived in America, there were twenty odd slaves, twenty odd black people, twenty odd Negroes. It says on this sign, but they changed the sign in 1992. It said one thing. In 1998, it said something else. 2005, they changed it. 2015, they changed it. Now they changed it again. So they're changing the story all the way. But it says there are only 20-odd people that were on a Portuguese ship. And when they arrived in America, they were not slaves. So the whole thing's, the whole thing's weird. There's a channel by a man called Dane Calloway. I, I need to look into it more. I want to look at a couple of his videos. But he's a black man from America. And he's saying, look, most of the, the blacks in America are Aboriginals. They're American Aboriginals. They're not Africans. You know, this whole thing's been cooked up. And even with the slave trade in Africa, it was the richest of the black leaders, the black landowners in Africa who were selling their own people into slavery. You know, so and everybody was slavery. There was there was Indians running slaves. There were the white people running slaves. Everybody was slaves. The whole the whole place was running slaves. It wasn't just white people stealing from Africa. It was all, this has been con concocted to put the white people and the black people against each other. This is divide and conquer. Mechanism. Divide and conquer. But my, our, 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 no. black, our black listeners now will be screaming bloody murder at the radio. They'll be saying, well, hang on a second. We've got, well, they will. A, we've got an abundance of evidence that, you know, slavery had to be abolished um, through obviously the work of Abraham Lincoln because blacks were kept in bondage on plantations and were subjugated and abused for decades in the United States. More than decades. Well, I've got, there will be records that indicate that, but are, are the records true? If you really look at it, if you look at the Reformation that happened and you look at the, the loss of Tartaria and what, what was really happening around circa 1850 to 1880 all around the world, I would suggest that even the, the um, American Civil War um, these were all, all cover-ups for clean-up operations. The colonisation of Australia was a cover-up for a clean-up operation. And the World War One and World War Two were still battles for Tartaria. Um, this has been an ongoing war probably since the 1600s, and it's so difficult to find out what actually happened because yeah. they've just changed everything. And little snippets of history, 
all of this stuff probably happened, but but who did it happen to? Which country? Where was it? And which bits have been taken from there and applied to other people? If you look at the the works of Ulysses, Ulysses from Greece, he he said he went off sailing to a green island west of Greece that he called Syria. The only green island you can find west of Greece is England. That's he right. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah. You look at Anatoly Fomenko's work, he claims that, that Moscow is more likely Jerusalem than Jerusalem. So this is what I mean. We don't know. We really don't know. All we've got is this whole mishmash of history that's been given to us. We've got all of these divisive mechanisms that have been given, put there to play people off against each other. We've got to realise that you know we were all slaves. Everybody was slaves. We Our are slaves, were, Max. We are. It's not we were. We are. Uh, this is yeah. this is massively important what you're saying right now. People need to understand it. You are a slave. We are the only creatures on this planet that must literally beg a, a fellow member of our species for the right to live. Of course, we're slaves. It's a fact. It's ridiculous. Yeah. it's ridiculous. But the thing is, my parents, my my ancestors, were brought to this country as children, and they didn't know what was no. going on. You can find records of uh, in the in the settlers' books in the in the first colonisers of Australia's books of there being white people here when the English arrived. But really, when you look at it, you look at the cities we've got here. The, these these cities were here when the English arrived. There's no way we built these cities. I mean, this, Captain Cook came here in, in 1770. Australia wasn't officially colonised until 1778. You go and find photos of Sydney in 1820. Have a look at that city that we got in Sydney in 1820. In 32 years, we built this city. Give me a break. These convicts they brought out here, Richie, they were just mad stonemasons. They had these mad stonemason skills. The first thing they did when the convicts arrived was they went out and digged all these quarries and bought all these, built all these Roman-style Gothic buildings with all this intricate scroll work and these giant churches and all this stuff that we can't build anymore because they were just so incredibly talented, these convicts, you know. Rubbish. The wow. buildings were already... Let me jump in. Let me just jump quickly in there. Um, this is brilliant stuff. Um, Max Egan is our guest today. Uh, great to have Max back on. It's been too long since he was on the program. We segued into something that Max was because Max is probably wondering: is, Has Richie been watching my YouTube channel? Of course I have. Of course I have. Not to try and catch out my guests uh, or anything like it, but I like to know what my um, research, what the researchers I've been following for years are saying. And if you go to the Crow House on YouTube, you'll see this um, terrific presentation. Uh, it's a recent interview with Max, Stolen History, Hidden Technology. And first of all, I'm, I, I'm proud of you for often saying, we don't know, Richie, we're asking questions. I'm very, uh, that means a lot to me that. I'm fed up with people telling me that this is the way it is. There's no other way. I know everything. You've never done that, and I appreciate that. I like the fact that ultimately we don't know, but these are the reasons 